Hello and good day to all. To care for those who once cared for us is one of the greatest honors. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce you to the eminent speakers of the day. We have here Dr. O.P. Sharma as a first speaker. Dr. O.P. Sharma works as a senior consultant, Department of Geriatric Medicine at Interprasta Apollo Hospitals, New Delhi. He's also an emeritus clinical tutor at Apollo Hospitals Educational Research Foundation. He's a general secretary for Geriatric Society of India, chief editor for Indian Journal of Geriatric Care. He also serves as an editor for Principles and Practice in Geriatric Medicine 2005-15 and PPV guidelines in older adults in 2008. Indian recommendations for vaccination in older adults in 2012 vaccines at a glance in the year 2015. Sir is also a member of co-committee for International Council on Adult Vax Immunization. We are happy to have you here amidst us. Looking forward to hear from you on assessment of geriatric patient necessary learning. Over to you, sir. Different problems in themselves. Normally the adult patients, they come, they tell their complaint and based upon their complaint, we examine them a particular system be examined, do some assessment and start the management. However, in case of the geriatric patient, things are a bit different. And it is good for every physician to know how the geriatric patient becomes slightly different and how the assessment of the geriatric patient is slightly a tricky subject when he or she comes in OPD or in a trial or emergency. I am Dr. O.P. Sharma, and thanks for the kind introduction. I do not know how far I deserve it, but yes, I am a student of geriatrics, and I would love to keep on learning geriatrics as much as possible with my very special interest in vaccination. Well, a geriatric patient may learn either in the outpatient department or in the emergency room. Normally, the definition taken is 60 years in India, 65 years at the international levels. The, de the definitions are different at different places because of different regions. Maybe in the uh, medicine department, it is different. Maybe for income tax purposes, it is different. Maybe from certain concessions, it is different. Uh, maybe from dealing in society, it is slightly different. However, we always talk of a calendar age and a biological age. But normally, by and large, what we consider is the calendar age, because for that, you don't have to do any assessment. On the contrary, for a biological age, you have to have some assessment criteria. When the patient comes to us, the patient comes to us in the OPD for a specific complaint, either comes or being brought. So either he complains or his attendant or caregiver complains. What we do? Based upon that, we do the assessment of the related system. For example, suppose somebody has come with a chest pain, obviously we think of coronary problem first or the chest problem uh, related to either muscles or lungs or the bony cage in that area. However, as the age advances, we all know the incidence of comorbidities increase in elderly, may it be diabetes, hypertension, heart failure, CKD, CLD, etc., etc. I don't think I have to dilate on this subject. One of the important things that one has to do is one has to have the functional assessment of it. And I remember many, many lectures of Dr. Pratibha Pereira on this subject, the functional assessment of an elderly patient or what she used to call popularly the comprehensive assessment. Then whenever the patient comes after listening to the complaint and examining, we should go through the reports. I don't think you will get any elderly patient in the OPD who doesn't come with a file, which contains a file of reports, partly because of the various consultations that they keep on seeking, and partly because of the economical reasons, the various schemes. Nowadays, in 400 rupees, you can get 80 tests done. 600 rupees, you get 900 tests done. So whether they are relevant or not relevant, we will get them done, simply because they are comparatively cheaper. And apart from the teachers who taught us in schools, colleges, there's another teacher who keeps on teaching everybody, and that is Google Uncle. 
So based on Google, also people go for investigations. It is always good to find out from the person in OPD, is he or she taking any medicine from anybody? And obviously, I won't be surprised if they turn out with certain prescriptions. Oh, for orthopedics, I'm consulting so-and-so. For cardiac, I'm consulting so-and-so. These are my various prescriptions. Besides that, certain things which they think they are not important, but they are taking it. They may be taking some Ayurvedic medicine, some herbal medicine, or some desi medicine, which they might be taking. And they say, no, it's a desi medicine. Well, any chemical, anything that goes inside the body is a medicine. And so every medicine is important, whether it is allopathic, Ayurvedic, homeopathic, whatever the pathy, including sympathy. Now, when we talk of specific complaint, normally the reason for which the patient comes to us in the OPD, well, there are certain reasons. And they, the reasons are either they have a fall or injury, bleeding, fever, vomiting, loose motions, lack of appetite. I'm sorry for the spelling mistake. Pain, swelling, breathlessness, altered sensorium, or altered memory, or memory loss. When I talk of altered memory, yes, I indirectly mean something that they have a loss of the recent memory while remember the old memory. And their memory loss means they suddenly start getting forgetful. These are two slightly different situations. However, after that, we examine the related system. For whatever the complaint for which the patient has come to us, we examine the system related to that. And based upon that, we do something further. Then there are comorbidities. We must ask them the history of comorbidities. Normally we ask them, are you otherwise okay? Oh, yes, yes, I am absolutely fit and fine. Then the attendant says, sir, you are taking that medicine for sugar. Oh, yes, 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 I have a little sugar problem, but it is under control, I am taking medicine. Then the person also comes out, hey, aap heart ke doctor. yes, yes, I am taking something for heart also. So like that, they are taking many medicines. They might be taking many medicines, which are nothing but comorbidities, which keep on increasing as the age advances. It is vital to know of comorbidities, even though the person has come for some other specific thing. For example, suppose the person has come for vomiting, and suppose the person is diabetic. It may be drug induced. It may be diabetic ketoacidosis. So naturally, to know about the comorbidities is a must. And every allied physician would always like to know from the history, history of comorbidities. Now, elderly person is one in which we have to have an extra assessment that is called the activities of daily living. This is basically essential because suppose you prescribe somebody a drug four times a day or five times a day or three times a day, something before the meal, something with the meal, something after the meal. And if the attendant is there or not there, whether the person can himself or herself take the medicine, whether the person can take a shot. Suppose somebody is on teratide and has to take the shot in the night. Suppose somebody is on insulin, then it has to be a drug taken at a particular time in the form of the shot. So does the person have the ability to do so? Does the person has the ability to take the wash, do the clothing part and etc.? So this functional assessment is always a must. It looks to be a very big job, but it's quite simple and quite not very time consuming. Now, before we go ahead with the prescription, we must see the reports. Well, the person might, might have come for a fall and suddenly you find the BP very high and you find that it is due to hypertensive and cephalopathy and you are about to prescribe a drug and suddenly you see the old reports and in, you find the potassium had been high, the creatine had been high. So obviously, you will not use the drugs which are passed through kidney or excreted through the kidney. Obviously, ARB and AC inhibitors will be very careful not giving them such things. Now, in the investigation reports, though there are maybe due to some discount schemes, but a number of times, many things they come as a surprise. As a surprise, you find the B12 levels to be very low, vitamin D levels to be very low. At the surprise, we come to know the certain parameters raised, especially about the lipids. 
it is not unusual for us to see people at the age of 60 or 65 or 70 allied and from rich class. And suddenly when they come out with the investigations, they find they have got gross dyslipidemia. Nothing unusual for all of us to see. So it's good to spare some time and have a glance at the investigations. Lastly, before we prescribe, let us give a respect to the other prescriptions also. The person might be having a GP or a family physician or somebody known to him whom he or she consults. The person might have been going to certain specialists, maybe of modern medicine, maybe of Ayurvedic, or maybe a self-medication. Number of times, because of the advertisements on television, people start taking the drugs. I remember, not now, but way back in 1974, when I was a registrar in medicine, one person came to me. When I was sitting in the follow-up patient's room, the person comes to me and sir, he was looking exhausted. I said, kya hua? Sir, koi aram nahi hua. Bhenka, kya hua? Kya main dawa bada bada roz le raun, koi aram nahi. I said, hua kya? Betho, betho. He made him sit. He could barely sit. He was feeling giddy. The gentleman had come to the hospital and seen in the first three rooms where we used to see the new cases and the person had severe constipation. For this, the person was given four teaspoonful of primafin in the, at bed time. The result was his constipation was over, but he developed loose motion. So obviously the trouble was there. So what, if, what he used to do, when he used to go to room number seven, that means the follow-up, the person used to ask, kya hua? Sir, abhi aram nahi hai. He said, okay, continue the same medicine. Because the lot of rush may not go through. So as a matter of fact, it is good that before we jot down a prescription or before we type out a prescription or dictate a prescription, we should see the previous prescriptions and the medication that the person is taking. Now, what about emergency room? Nothing unusual. In emergency uh, room, uh, I'm working in a corporate hospital uh, that is in the first Apollo hospital. And at least 30% of the patients who come in ER are above the age of 60. Above the age of 60. And they may come for a specific complaint or something might have been a precipitating factor. Say, while walking, suddenly he slipped down. Suddenly he started vomiting. Suddenly he had a spell of giddiness. Suddenly he developed absolute lack of appetite. So people bring them at times even in the emergency room. So this may not be a disease. This may be a precipitating factor. So whatever that complaint is there, we take it into action. But then what we do? We do other things also. Like we quickly do the vital checkup, we do see the related system, we again go through the comorbidities, we see the various prescriptions, we try to check the medication. Uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of freebies in this country. There are a lot many places where you get the medicines free. So people go, take medicine free from one place, take the medicine free from other place, put them in one envelope, other in other envelope, and then they forget for which envelope what medicine was there. So what happens, those envelopes keep on piling that. But at times when they go to the hospital, they carry all the envelopes with them. Again, the investigation reports are also very important in emergency room. I remember my late father used to say, there is enough time to think in every emergency. Emergency does not mean that we become a spinal animal and reflexly we give the shot or we give some tablet. We always have time to think. So these investigations reports are to be seen. And again, before we take a final decision, a functional status of the patient has to be seen. Now, what are the specific complaints for this normally the landing ER? Falls, fractures, injuries, bleeding, altered sensorium, high fever, breathlessness, GI discordances like vomiting and wound motions. Most of the elderly, they come to the emergency room only with these complaints. Uh, if you recall, during the COVID period, with the inspiration from Professor P. S. Shankar sir, we brought out a book on management issues in elderly 
which was based purely upon the signs, purely based upon the symptoms with which the person was coming. So we identified about 52 such symptoms and based upon them, we analyzed them. We saw that uh, what are the investigations to be done, what are the medications to be given. So accordingly, before we do that, we see that out of those 52 symptoms, the commonest are these seven or eight symptoms with which the elderly patient lands in the emergency room. First thing we should do is we should immediately check the vitals. After asking the name or whatever this thing, which are normally filled up by the nurses, it is good to check the vitals because there may be something which may be disastrous. The person might have come with ventricular tachycardia. This pulse rate may be very high, very high. Or the person might have come with a heart block and maybe feeling giddy, the pulse rate may be around 40. So that is an emergency. Similarly, checking of blood pressure, again, is a must and should be quick. COVID period. COVID period brought in every house a small gadget, and that is pulse oximeter. That has become very handy, and I am so happy. Now, in the emergency bag of every doctor, and rather on the table of every doctor, every physician, we find that lying down. And one tries to check the oxygen saturation. The temperature is something very vital. Whether the person has low, very low temperature or very high temperature, the pulsations are to be checked. And fortunately, nowadays, in most of the good hospitals, in the emergency or in the trials, there is a facility to do ABG. The moment you do ABG, you do the, whether the person has lack of oxygen or has got carbon dioxide retention, what is the pH and what is the electrolyte. These are the informations which are very vital in emergency and you get them within few minutes. Now, after checking the vitals, it is good to remember the primary symptoms or the specific complaint for which the patient has landed and based upon that, on that particular system, we should do a thorough examination. It is always vital to do, vital to do a general examination first. Unfortunately, the breed of general physicians or general practitioners is disappearing and it's an era of specialists. A day will come when you go to the ENT person, he says, what is the problem? You say, oh, I have got deafness. We said, which ear, right or left? And then you look at the person and the person will say, I am a specialist, ENT specialist who specializes in left ear deafness only. So you, you go to the other chamber where the right ear person sits. But a general physician sees top to bottom. In emergency also, we are supposed to see the person top to bottom. Then central nervous system, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, orthopedic system, genital urine, nerve, and skin. One should ex examine based upon the symptom. For example, it is not unusual for us to see number of times patients missing, Somebody comes to the ER, oh, I've got severe allergy and it pains. Then you find an eruption. And when you properly examine, you find it is a herpetic eruption. It is because of the herpetic eruption that the person is having severe pain. So it is good to examine the skin part also properly. Then we come to the comorbidities. It's very easy to check a comorbidity. Even if the history is a little bit doubtful, do a quick check of the blood sugar, you know whether the person is diabetic or not. Even if there is no attendant available or even if the attendant available has no knowledge about the patient. Please don't feel bad if even from a joint family, the son-in-law or daughter-in-law or, or the son brings the elderly person and doesn't know what the father is suffering from, what the medicine they are take, he's taking. Nothing unusual for us to see. We used to get wild and emotional earlier. Nowadays, we are poor and we work. Similarly, people see KD. There's nothing unusual. So there that ABG will help you. And based upon the ABG, you may ask for care. Well, moment your pulse oximeter shows that the person is doing CO2 retention or has lack of oxygen, that will give you a clue that yes, there might be something either metabolic or respiratory or cardiac. So based upon that, you do some investigation to decide that, and that is either a 
cardiogram or a chest x-ray or ABG. CLD, it is not unusual. Person coming with altered sodium and having Peter hepaticus. They are in hepatic frequency. Elderly people coming up, staying alone, indulging in alcoholism, and then they suddenly fall sick or when they are unconscious, neighbors bring them to the hospital and you find the person smelling. If you have smelled this fetal hepaticus bulbs, you will never forget it. Then you think of other causes, hepatic pre coma or coma. Similarly, central nervous system examination is a must. It is not unusual for them to get a little bit injury, trivial injury on feeling giddy and forgetting about it. Friends, you will be surprised to know that the first defense minister of government of India, Krishna Manu, he while taking bath in the bathroom had hit his head slightly against the shower, felt little giddy, came out, sat down, didn't tell anybody, went out, and then he was feeling giddy. Then he sat down for some time. So somebody said, sir, sir, let's have a checkup done. He said, no, no, forget about it. I have to go to the parliament. He went to the parliament and there after some time, he suddenly collapsed and they found that he had subdural hematoma, which was because of that injury in the bathroom. Sir, uh, just have four minutes left for the session to end. In that, I'll finish within that. Oh, yes, thank you. And we should see the various prescriptions, whether by the GP or various specialists or even from other systems of medicine. Then we should also have a check on the medication, the current medication, the medicines that person is taking off and on, and the medicines from other pathies, which we may not understand, but on asking, we may know the indication for which they are taking. Then it is good to go for lab investigation quickly, even in the ER, and the commonest is CBC, KFT, LFT, sugar, and if required, a thyroid function if the person has altered sensorium or even semi -cone. However, in elderly, nothing is complete without the functional status. ADL should be done. And a topic which is very close to the heart of Dr. Ananti Ambale or, or, and the subject on which talks again and again is elder abuse. A number of times we find a little injury and the person is giving some other history in front of the attendant. When the attendant goes away, then, then the person says, oh, it is not that I hit the, against the wall, I was hurt. So elder abuse is again something which is specific to elderly patients, which we should take care of. Colleagues, in the ER, what we have to do is commonly deal with dehydration, hypertension, hypertension, electrolyte imbalance, particularly sodium, low and potassium as well, low bleeding fractures, signs of poisoning, signs of elder abuse, and sepsis, pretty common, for which in detection we may take some time. Dear colleagues, after that, let us refer to the specialist. Let us not think that we know everything. There's no harm in taking the opinion of the cardiologist, the orthopedic surgeon, kidney specialist, chest physician, brain specialist. But ultimately, all the prescriptions should be rationalized by the geriatrician and the geriatrician should plan the investigation. Not that because the orthopedic surgeon has said, oh, there is an injury to the spine, send the person for MRI. And when the person comes back from MRI, then the neurologist says, oh, he requires MRI of the brain also, you send the person again. So wait, have everybody's opinion, rationalize, and put the investigation into order, and then take your decision. Dear colleagues, this is the book which was mentioned in my introduction. It contains 102 chapters covering practically the whole of the geriatric medicine in India, written by Indians. And this is the issue, management issues in geriatric care available. If anybody wants, they can contact us. And we also brought out a smaller book for the purpose of day-to-day uh, -day physicians who are interested in elderly patients. Dear colleagues, thank you so much for your patient hearing. You are welcome to join GSI.